you know, being in this space. As the rabbi mentioned, uh, you know, being in this room with my wife and my children on different occasions, far more joyful and peaceful. I've spoken uh, in different spaces since the horrific uh, terrorism that occurred. <clears throat> and as I'm sitting up here, it's hard not to uh, have a different set of feelings um, move inside of me. You all know that. Um, my wife is, is Jewish and her children are Jewish. So it's always been personal. But to be in this space, um, it's, it's hitting me even, <clears throat> even more. I want to say that uh, we're grieving. We're grieving loss in the face of horrific acts of violence and unspeakable <coughs> evil uh, committed against our Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel. And my heart is very heavy. And I don't just say that as, uh, as your lieutenant governor. I say that from a far more intimate Place. I say that as a husband, I say that as a father, I say that as a member of this community. Been having some very challenging conversations <clears throat> with uh, our boys, they're 10, and try to figure out how to communicate this to them. Uh, the sheer brutality, the ruthlessness, the complete disregard for life, life of children, it's beyond comprehension. You can't, you can't do that. But what I've learned in, in, in talking to my kids about this is even talking to them about hate and the concept of hate, the idea of hate. It's a window into our innocence as human beings when you have those kinds of conversations. They don't understand. It's like it doesn't compute in their minds, in their, in their, in their innocence. And they get emotional. They get I don't understand. And it makes me emotional because I yearn for that innocence. And it reminds me of a quote from Nelson Mandela. Who talk about how no one is born hating. No one is born hating somebody because of the color of their skin or their race or their religion. No one's born this way. They don't come into the world hating. It's taught. It's a learned behavior. It's passed down from one generation to the next. Hate. Hate is what has brought all this to bear. Hatred of Jews. In this instance, hate is, though, indiscriminate. It is the enemy of life, the enemy of peace, the enemy of love. It is ignorant, it is diabolical, it is destructive, and it has been unleashed. And it continues to terrorize from the hostages still in need of rescue to the 
And this is Palestinians being used as human shields by Hamas. But I come here this evening because I want to support and demonstrate that we are in this together. And I know in my heart of hearts that to be human is to love. It is. It's to love. I come to you knowing with every fiber in my being that hate is not who we are. It is not our essence as human beings. No matter where we come from, it is not. For life is love. And there is nothing more natural to the human heart than to love. There is nothing more natural to the human heart than to love. Rabbi spoke about the spark of the divine. That's the spark. That capacity, that innate capacity to love is the spark. Dr. King uh, preached a lot about love. And he told us that the most durable power in the world is love. He told us that the greatest force in the universe is love, and that is absolutely true. There's nothing close to it. Hate shudders in fear in the presence of love. Melts. Overwhelmed. When it's real. And in these dark days, I want us all to hold on tight to the light of love and to the infinite strength and its power. And with love in my heart, I stand with you this evening and always. The state of New York profoundly stands, proudly stands with you and will do so always. And this administration will do everything we can to ensure our Jewish community is protected and supported always. And we will do everything that we can to ensure that all New Yorkers from every walk of life, no matter their religion, are protected from hate and supported with love. We will look out for each other and we will get through this together. Hate in any form will have no home in New York. I want to, in conclusion, just share a quote that I've tried to share every, every place I've gone to try to communicate <clears throat> what to hold on to in this moment. And, and again, it, it does come from my my personal my personal hero. And I just want to share a brief little story that happened today. I, I spoke uh, at a uh, synagogue in, in the city. The rabbi sent uh, my team a note, and I didn't know it, but he had a, a little boy in, in the audience that that night. And he asked his son. He's sharing this with me. He asked his son. What did you think of the service? And his son said, you know, I, I really thought it was powerful. You know, a kid, seven or eight years old. <clears throat> and he said, but I really, I really liked, you know, when the Lieutenant Governor quoted Dr. King, because he'd been studying Dr. King and was learning that he felt a connection, you know, that personal touch. I just want to plead uh, for us to continue to think about our children and what it's like to be children and, and the innocence that they carry with them and how it's incumbent upon us to protect that and to, to, to help them understand the power that they possess as people and to really know that, that the sooner we can get them to understand the power of love and that they have that as their superpower, the better off our world will be. The better off our world will be we really are intentional about this. Dr. King said, oceans of history are made turbulent 
by the ever-rising tides of hate. History is cluttered with the wreckage of nations and individuals that pursued this self-defeating path of hate. Love is the ultimate force that makes for the saving choice of life and good against the damning choice of death and evil. Therefore, the first hope, the first hope, the first hope in our inventory must be the hope that love is going to have the last word. Let's make sure that love has the last word. God bless you.